Good morning and welcome to the Net Scientific PLC Investor Presentation. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged and can be submitted at any time via the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Simply type in your questions and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company can review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it is appropriate to do so. Before we begin, I'd like to submit the following poll. I'd now like to hand you over to the management team from Net Scientific. Ilian, good morning. Good morning, Ilian. Thank you very much uh, for hosting and uh, thank you everybody for uh, joining us for this uh, presentation on Net Scientific's uh, business and uh, strategy update. Uh, so I'll go at a little bit of detail about our strategy for those of you who are seeing us for the first time, but I appreciate many of you have seen us present before, so sorry for the repeat. Uh, so um, after that, I'll follow with uh, a uh, some of the highlights of uh, 2023. I want to emphasize this is not the annual report, so you have to wait for all the detail uh, uh, when that comes out, but we are able to report some uh, positive highlights from last year. I'll also look at some of the portfolio highlights for the year, and I'll close off with a strategy update where we have uh, uh, where we outline a little bit how we have uh, further streamlined our strategy and our plans for the year. Uh, future. Uh, so briefly about Net Scientific, uh, we are a, uh, essentially a listed uh, venture capital investment group with a focus on deep tech and life sciences. And we have an international portfolio of uh, uh, companies in a range of sectors. Our strategy is not passive, it is active, and that's a key differentiator. Uh, we identify investing and uh, uh, grow companies in the UK and internationally, but we have a proactive approach in managing that portfolio, both by uh, arranging finance for these businesses, investing from our balance sheet, but also applying what we call our value creation services to help those companies uh, grow. Uh, from a shareholder perspective, we believe this provides the best of both worlds, both direct equity stakes, but also exposure to carried interest through our uh, syndicated investment practice. Uh, what that enables us to do is a capital efficient investment strategy whereby we support our portfolio companies by combining our funds as well as that of third parties, but also being uh, cautious as to when and how much money is being deployed. Quite important in uh, today's market environment. Uh, now, we offset our running costs through fee-based services. Those both come from corporate finance fees charged to our FCA regulated subsidiary, EMV Capital but also as I flagged by charging for value creation services for the companies that choose to have those. We have a footprint not only in the UK, but also in the US and EU, both in terms of our portfolio companies, but also in terms of our corporate and investor relationships. What that means is that we are able to help our portfolio to scale and internationalize at an early stage. Uh, we have a tight but uh, effective board uh, on the uh, CEO of the business. I'm also a significant shareholder of Net Scientific. I hold roughly 15%. You could say I'm uh, rather motivated to see the value grow. Uh, my own background is from uh, technology, investment, IP commercialization, and uh, more broadly, innovation. Uh, the other executive director is uh, my colleague, Ed Hooper, uh, who is uh, both group general counsel and uh, executive director. He's a former partner at a city law firm with a strong experience in corporate finance, M&A, IPOs and other fields. The two non executives are Dr. Charles Spicer, who is an experienced investment banker from the healthcare industry, known by many in the city, as well as uh, Dr. Jonathan Robinson, who is uh, an experienced and serial entrepreneur. He's built his own businesses and uh, we work with him as well quite closely. Uh, Stephen Crow is a group CFO leading the finance team, and there's a team of roughly 15 people uh, behind, uh, uh, behind the scene uh, making all the good stuff happen. Now, uh, our portfolio at the moment is uh, roughly 23 companies. Uh, within that, we also have Martlet Capital, which is a Cambridge-based early-stage VC fund that has a further large portfolio, providing early-stage deal flow to our group. Um, we haven't had changes to our portfolio last year. Last year was very much reflecting the times, a defensive year where we were looking at uh, supporting our existing portfolio companies. Uh, but as the markets uh, change, that is also likely to change uh, for us. So what are the key highlights? Well, um, we feel that we have done well last year, again, considering the market environment, but also reflecting the growing consolidation and confidence of our business model. We've seen a modest increase in the, the fair value of our privately held assets, 
um, that has been offset uh, somewhat by our one publicly uh, held asset uh, PDS. Uh, but across the group portfolio, we have seen roughly 52 million pounds raised through equity and venture debt by 13 of those companies. We feel, again, in the current market conditions, that's a pretty good result. And again, it shows the uh, strength of our portfolio and its attractiveness in, a, in, in challenging uh, times. We have further increased our capital under advisory. That is the money that we syndicate into, uh, into our uh, uh, group under the, in the capital umbrella. And that has supported our closely held companies uh, uh, through growth and uh, supporting their valuations as the companies continue to grow. Um, in line with our strategy to do selective uh, uh, early divestments, we have made a proprietary trade profit of roughly half a million pounds, resulting from secondary sales of 1.4 million uh, across two portfolio companies. Uh, we feel on a strategic level that's quite important because it shows our ability to exit companies ahead of a full M&A or an IPO. Quite important in our space to be able to show exit returns. We've seen a significant increase in the fees generated by EMV Capital, uh, which uh, has covered uh, uh, around half of the group's uh, costs. We feel that's a strong result and uh, uh, shows what is possible in this space. And uh, most importantly, of course, not having to fundraise from the markets in a different, difficult environment. Uh, last but not least, uh, uh, recently EMV Capital received its direct FCA authorization. And that for us is a really key milestone. It's a validation of our strategy. Uh, uh, but also uh, it enhances our brand and importantly, it enables us to expand and deepen our corporate finance practice as well as to launch our fund management uh, activities. And I'll talk about that uh, later on, but all of these provide a very good basis for 2024. Uh, you, you've seen in previous presentations this slide where I've shown some of our companies going through our um, uh, value creation process, uh, starting from our acquisition of these businesses or stakes in these businesses, rebuild, rebuilding their plans, going through various value inflection points, building up the investment readiness through to a fundraise. And this has now, there's been significant progress since last year on at least several of those businesses. Ventive, in which we acquired the stake uh, 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 roughly a year ago, has conducted a further fundraise uh, uh, in December. And that locked in a, a, a significant return. It locked in a 14 times return on our uh, initial investment, which we feel is uh, uh, quite good. Uh, but uh, Deep Tech Recycling, which is a plastic waste management uh, uh, restart that we acquired from the administrator, the company has really strong history in that space, uh, has also progressed significantly with money raised and now the company progressing on the first project. I'll talk a little bit more about uh, the portfolio companies but what I want to showcase here is our process in action, that uh, you know we're not standing still, we're helping to progress these businesses through the next value inflection points and uh, growing thereafter. Uh, now, a little bit more about the portfolio companies. Uh, Praxis uh, is uh, uh, one of our uh, subsidiaries. When we talk about subsidiaries, really we're looking at this as portfolio companies in which we happen to have more than 50%. Uh, Net Scientific uh, no longer funds these companies from the balance sheet, therefore, while we consolidate, they're not a burden on our operational cash. So it's a really important point and a big change compared to a few years ago. Uh, with ProAccess, uh, rec recognizing the, the uh, strength and interest in the uh, respiratory diagnostics market, we have strengthened the board with the appointment of Alan Markey as executive chair. Uh, he's a uh, medical uh, devices uh, 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 entrepreneur who has exits in this space, as well as Professor Stephen Mint, who is also quite well known in the medical diagnostic circles. Uh, with that, we revised the plan. We uh, uh, cut the cash burn of the business and uh, refocused the company on uh, core sales. Uh, but also as we flagged in our business update, we have uh, 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 decided to uh, strategically put the company up for sale, building up on the achievements so far and enabling the company to uh, uh, to get a new home, to, max to fully maximize uh, the value of its uh, uh, of its capabilities. Uh, we expect we'll have more on that, but in the meantime, the company continues with business as usual, again, maximizing what they already have. Glycotest is our US-based liver cancer diagnostics company in which we own just over 50%. In line with our strategy not to fund companies directly from balance sheet, we secured over the last uh, 12 months, uh, both an additional investment from Fosun in line with our original agreements with them, a further one million, 
uh, as well as uh, privately syndicated investment of roughly $800,000 syndicated by EMV Capital. That has enabled the company to continue to grow uh, uh, over the last uh, 12 months. They have completed their enrollment uh, phase of the clinical validation study. And we now believe that Glycotest has uh, probably the world's largest biobank of uh, liver cancer diagnostic samples. It, it is a major achievement for the business, and we believe a value inflection point. They're now positioned to move through the next stages in terms of uh, building up uh, their lab developed test and looking at a market launch. PDS Biotech is another well-known uh, portfolio company of ours. Uh, it's a NASDAQ listed business in the immune oncology space. Um, they have uh, continued to announce uh, uh, really strong results for their, uh, uh, for their clinical program. And they're now uh, in a preparation mode for the phase three trials. Uh, now, the PDS, as well as many other biotech companies in the U.S., have been affected by continued volatility in weakness in those markets. Uh, the current market cap is in the 150 million range uh, with the daily changes. But we continue to have strong confidence in this business and uh, the next stages that will come with it. Some of our other non-life sciences uh, and uh, portfolio companies. Uh, Qbot is a robotics as a service business that we have uh, uh, taken a deeper stake in. The last year, we collected a three and a half million fundraise in the business. We have recently strengthened the board with uh, uh, a new chair that will be announced uh, soon that comes from an industrial background, as well as the addition of Malcolm Groth as a, uh, a second investment director of the business. The company has now so far done four and a half thousand installations in the UK and internationally with a very high success rate. They're working with the likes of E.ON, the French uh, construction conglomerate Bouge and others. With a really strong pipeline so we are quite optimistic for the business uh, going forward uh, and they have also initiated the uh, internationalization of the business we flag here the european side but there's also work ongoing uh, uh, for potential market entry in the us uh, sofant is an edinburgh university spin out uh, one which we've been following and building a stake in uh, for many years uh, we have uh, we are the largest shareholder in uh, sofant when you take into account our capital under advisory the companies made further significant steps last year, and uh, the particularly important one was them signing an advanced purchase order with Inmarsat, which is now part of Viasat, with uh, Viasat looking to uh, utilize Sofant in a number of applications. They've continued their work with the European Space Agency, as well as a global aerospace company that's uh, in, in confidence. Uh, so we're very optimistic about Sofant. Their technology promises up to 70% energy efficiency, uh, compared to other uh, similar uh, solutions uh, in the space. And it's a, it's a fast growing market. So you've all seen uh, the importance of uh, Starlink and other such uh, Leo and Neo satellite uh, constellations, uh, both uh, from a defense perspective, but also from a, a civilian perspective. So we feel Sofan is really well positioned for that business. Uh, Vortex, which is a liquid biopsy company, has continued to develop its offering with a launch in, their, uh, in the London, uh, uh, London Institute of Cancer. Uh, in London, uh, and uh, uh, we, uh, they have appointed a strong chief uh, technology officer, Paul Reeves, and uh, we, we look forward to announcing further news in, uh, in the future. I mentioned our investment in Ventive and uh, the 14 times return we have uh, achieved on, 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 the private in, on the private side there. Uh, the company is uh, further scaling uh, uh, at the moment with further hires, and they're both growing their their. Uh, uh, ventilation side of the business as well the heat pump business which we expect will launch over the next year uh, I'll, I'll also talk a little bit about Martlet Capital uh, we invested in Martlet uh, just over two years ago maybe close to three years ago and part of the vision there was to build a strong deal flow source uh, in what is arguably one of the world's largest and most concentrated clusters of deep tech and life sciences Martlet has continued to grow. It has made a number of exciting investments in companies such as New Quantum, Spotter, Octopipe, and Zampler. And we're working increasingly closely with the Martlet team to deepen our relationships and to look at co-investment opportunities. So as we look forward, uh, relationships such as uh, those with Martlet will be quite important in uh, uh, delivering to us strong investment opportunities uh, for the scale-up stage. I'll now switch a little bit to um, uh, the future. Uh, we are a dynamic and uh, agile company. We reflect on our experience and we reflect what we learn in the market. It's also important to recognize the venture, that the venture capital industry itself is in a massive value inflection point. 
it is not uh, uh, or rather switching point it is not the first time this has happened in the past in 2001 then again in 2008 we are going through a similar process right now we are strong believers in the venture capital industry but also what we believe is happening is that with the end of a phase in the VC industry, the uh, market trends are coming our way. And what we mean by that is that opportunities in the deep tech space, uh, we believe that the VC industry will increasingly focus on opportunities in our space, in our industries. However, uh, uh, the business models of the VC space have to change. And we believe we are really well positioned with our combination of proactive investment, fund, uh, fund management and value creation services uh, to uh, to utilize these opportunities. In line with our view and perspective of the market, we have uh, revised our strategy further. So we uh, have several uh, core pl planks, if you will, of our strategy. The first one is that we want to, and we will continue to grow the value of net scientific stakes in the portfolio companies. What that means is, of course, the growth in value of these businesses, but also it means protecting our stake very strongly. So it's capital efficient in these companies minimizing dilution and active management to protect our stakes while the businesses uh, grow. We also flagged uh, before that uh, we, we, with the FCA uh, authorization, we now want to progress our fund management practice. What that means is that in addition to the direct investments that Net Scientific is able to make, we expect to launch uh, uh, one or more funds that will provide further scale to our business as well as increased carried interest potential. This is really exciting. It's really taking Net Scientific to the next level of growth in this market space, and it positions the company's well for growth. Uh, it will also provide, from a financial perspective, uh, significant annual recurring revenues, management fees from these funds, which will increase the stability of the business uh, going forward. However, it's easy to put money in businesses. What about getting money out? Uh, we are increasingly focused on uh, uh, not only encouraging our portfolio companies to consider exits, but actually putting infrastructure around that through our value creation services side to help the companies think about exits, prepare for exits, identify the right m and advisors for them to take them to that stage. Uh, so we uh, we've, we've flagged the uh, uh, work we're doing with ProAxis on their m and route, and there are several other companies that we're now in a proactive fashion uh, working with to map out their exit strategies uh, 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 in a systematic and a non-rushed manner so that we can maximize value from our stakes in those businesses. Uh, all of that means that we want to build a resilient and high-performance firm. It is not just about the existing portfolio. It is not just about maximizing exit. It is also about building a strong platform with a strong team that can continue to grow and attract interesting deals on the market and to obtain investment returns for our investors. Uh, so there's a fair amount of infrastructure work in the in the background that continues to strengthen the resilience of our business uh, uh, and uh, increase the efficiency of operation. And uh, last but not least, all of this in many ways leads towards financial sustainability, where we're moving towards covering or perhaps exceeding our core operating costs through the combination of operational income, which comes from corporate finance fees, by creation services fees, and in the future fund management fees, as well as secondary trading income through the profitable exits, uh, 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 midway, if you will, before a full exit uh, of some of our portfolio companies. We believe all of that uh, means that Net Scientific is really well positioned to take advantage of the VC industry shift that we are seeing ourselves uh, uh, right now. There's a lot of opportunities that we are uh, 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 seeing, but we have in particular focused on uh, two uh, fund opportunities that we are working in parallel. Uh, I flag the exit opportunities for our portfolio companies. Uh, and we believe that all of those actions provide a great opportunity for the market to uh, align uh, our market cap with the underlying uh, asset value. And I'll stop at that and uh, open up the floor for questions. Ilian, thank you for your presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, please do continue to submit your questions just by using the Q&A tab situated on the top right hand corner of your screen. Just while the company take a few moments to review those questions submitted today, I'd like to remind you that a recording of this presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A, can be accessed by your Investor Dashboard. As you can see, we have received a number of questions throughout today's presentation. I please ask you to read out the questions and give responses where appropriate to do so, and I'll pick up from you at the end. Okay. Thank you very much. So thank you for your questions. It's a really a lively Q&A board, so I'll start from the top. Um, so first question is, uh, uh, 
what is your view on uh, uh, AI, artificial intelligence, noting that you have said in the past that you do not invest in hype? Uh, you're absolutely right. We do not invest in hype. I would go so far as to say we don't like paying the menu price on deals. Uh, where we see opportunities there is, uh, look, we do not have the um, conviction to, to invest in uh, uh, big platforms, if you will, that uh, here is a new AI approach uh, that... Uh, that will uh, uh, transform how AI is done. So we would have absolutely missed open AI. I can tell you that it's just not what we look for. Where we feel we have a strategic advantage is on looking at the uh, uh, the uh, overlaps of uh, different verticals uh, or horizontals. Uh, and with respect to AI, where we feel we have an advantage is looking at how AI and big data is applied to the sectors we have a strength in. So we are seeing really exciting applications of AI around medical diagnostics, around uh, uh, improving the efficiency of clinical trials on the life sciences and uh, on the life sciences and uh, uh, biotech side. And on the industrial side, similarly, uh, looking at uh, uh, the uses of AI in uh, 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 improving the efficiency of industrial applications, accelerating uh, uh, renewables, uh, uh, pre preventative diagnostics uh, around industrial infrastructure and so on and so forth. So we. For us, what's really exciting is seeing these new technology waves as they become applied into market segments, market niches that we know about. And another reason to do that is because we know the market leaders in those niches. We know how to speak to them. We're better able to, we can add value in those in those spaces. So I'll move to the next question, um, which is um, this one. How will EMV Capital's direct FCA authorization uh, enable uh, expansion and why have you moved to FCA authorization at this point and not sooner? Um, well, uh, so we have been an appointed representative for many years uh, with our uh, very supportive partners, uh, Sapphire Capital, who if they're on the call, uh, couldn't uh, recommend them more for early stage and growing uh, VC funds that look for incubation support. Uh, now, we uh, uh, FCA authorization simply take a long time. It takes a lot of time for a company to go through the business case to do that. It is a very serious matter, but also I would say the FCA process itself uh, takes a long time and we uh, it took longer than we expected, which we understand is uh, normal in the industry right now. Now that we have it, it means that we can accelerate in particular our fund management practice. There is a number of uh, interesting teams, investment thesis out there with whom we can partner as well as building up our own uh, fund practice. I mentioned that there's two specific initiatives that we're working on and we believe there'll be others. I think looking forward over a couple of years, I think it opens up the opportunity for Net Scientific to have a multi-fund per topic, if you will, uh, operating structure, partnering with strong high conviction teams that we know, that we believe in, that we've worked in and provide them with the infrastructure, but also the synergies with the rest of our models. So we believe it provides the best of all worlds uh, option as opposed to a, a standalone uh, fund. But of course, there's many different styles in the industry. The next, sorry, and if I can ask uh, Lily to keep keep clicking the ones that have answered. Uh, just uh, um, how is your invest, investing policy evolving, not in the current high concentration? What is your mid-term and longer-term objectives on investment diversification? Uh, so I think we've been on a journey um, I've, I've talked about one aspect where we had inherited uh, subsidiaries, recognizing that we're not an industrial holding company, we are ultimately a VC, and working gradually to taking those companies from being subsidiaries to not being subsidiaries, either by growing them with third party funds or indeed by uh, exiting them. So that's one part of the strategy. I think for the existing uh, portfolio, uh, a portfolio of 23 is not small, but it's also not uh, uh, huge. Uh, there is a core group of companies that uh, uh, we have where we have uh, double digit stakes. That group is bigger now than it was uh, two years ago. So that has led to some diversification of our options. However, in the future, the diversification will come through our growing work with fund management uh, on the fund management practice that I explained and net scientific selectively identifying some businesses where it wants to build a deeper, deeper stake directly from balance sheet. Again, we believe that that provides for a diversified approach, combining the de-risking of using third-party capital and the scale of it with our own balance sheet. The next question, uh, 
which is a time of at times a very uh, emotional one uh, for entrepreneurs. What is your view on liquidation preferences and anti-dilution clauses? Uh, I mean, the answer is depends on which side you are of those. Uh, but um, jokes aside, we find ourselves often on the switching point between where EIS money kind of ends and institutional or family office or corporate money comes in. Uh, a lot of the international money requires pref shares, requires uh, anti-dilution uh, elements. Uh, but a lot of our partners uh, and co-investors uh, from the US world uh, don't like those for, for understandable reasons. Uh, so I would say that we overall try to be a good citizen in terms of uh, helping the companies evolve the cap structure as the business uh, uh, evolves and the types of investors that come in, uh, avoiding the worst excesses that you can have uh, uh, in the current market environment while also ensuring that investors uh, have an adequate uh, return. Uh, we have seen over the last year, reflecting the difficulties in the markets, some really uh, toxic uh, uh, instruments, and uh, we stay away from those. Uh, we feel those are uh, a win in the short term, but a loss in the long term. Uh, so, uh, you know, we, we try to keep things healthy, if you will. Uh, there's a question on Qbot. Uh, what are you able to say about the geographical expansion of Qbot? Uh, so Qbot's number one priority is to get to break even from the in the UK market. Uh, they, their revenues were, let's say, stable last year. Uh, it was a, a year of learning. There was a lot of positives, a lot of great customers, but uh, it didn't grow as much as uh, we desired. Uh, but we have a really strong pipeline now of roughly 8 million pounds of contracts and a further identified opportunity of uh, 30 million at Qbot. Um, so certainly the company has a good path towards break-even on the back of the UK practice. Having said that, we have had demand pull from the US and other markets that has meant the company has responded to opportunities with uh, in the industrial participants in those spaces. And uh, while the UK market is uh, large, if you look into the US and European markets, it's order of magnitude larger. Now, uh, there's many UK companies that have fallen by the wayside because of badly executed US uh, uh, expansion. It's, it's, a, it's a really important thing. To, it's an important but dangerous thing to, to, to try your hand at. So we're taking a very considered approach where we're looking for partners in those territories rather than expanding by, by ourselves. And we hope that we'll have uh, some progress before the end of the year. A question from Marcus. Uh, with regards to the fund management practice, what specific measures are being taken to ensure that the additional annual recurring revenue and petition potential liquidity events? Uh, so I think it, it's almost, a, um, uh, it goes without saying that a, a fund management practice um, uh, comes with a, uh, annual management fee. Uh, it depends on the fund, it depends on the uh, uh, strength of the team, and it depends on the investors what that specific uh, uh, management fee is. Uh, that's not meant as a pure upside, it is to pay for a management team. However, as our business evolves, we believe that this a, a increasing part of our uh, core operating costs will be covered by such recurring uh, uh, fund management fees which is good for the business. It means that the health of the business and the stability will, uh, will grow with uh, exits uh, providing uh, uh, upside. We feel being part of a fund, having access to such funds is good for net scientific shareholders, including on the liquidity events. It will increase and multiply the, the liquidity options. Um, and you know, there's only so much we can say right now, but uh, clearly it provides more opportunities. A question from Mike. With regards to the investment strategy, life sciences investment time scales and regulatory burden can can be significant compared to other tech sectors. How do you reconcile those risks and how would you think about the evolution of the portfolio over the next three to five years? Uh, so we are very explicitly a deep tech focused investor. And when we say deep tech, it's a broad church. With that, in that we include life sciences, we include med tech, we include industrials, uh, deep AI, if you will. Um, these are the areas where um, uh, it's not B2C, it's not FinTech, it's not crypto, it's not, it's not SaaS. It's areas where uh, there is a high level of IP providing significant levels, uh, barriers to entry. Often there's uh, CapEx requirements, but with our approach, you can satisfy those with a combination of private, public money and corporate money. Um, we see the regulatory barriers as, on the one hand, of course, difficult. It takes longer to get to market, but once you are behind those regulatory barriers, uh, it, it really increases the value of the business. I'll give you one example. Uh, Sage Tech Medical, which is our portfolio company uh, with a, a, an aesthetic 
uh, with an offering for the anesthetic industry, capturing anesthetic gas, which happened to be very bad for the environment, similar to the old ferions you had in your fridge, which is that now you breed them. Uh, so the EU has just passed some really strong um, uh, environmental laws, which uh, SageTech believes uh, significantly increase the incentive for that technology to be adopted. You know, so the current path of regulatory uh, work increases the demand for what our portfolio companies do. You can say the same around energy efficiency and, and many other aspects. Uh, so, so I think overall the regulatory aspect we think increases the barriers to, barriers to entry in our space and it makes for more valuable uh, companies. Um, now in terms of how we reconcile those risks, and that, that is why I say that uh, doing deep tech investment is different to doing crypto or fintech or SaaS, it's a different thing. We wouldn't be good at SaaS investment or crypto or fintech. We have specialized in this space. Uh, so in, in many of these areas, we have uh, advisors in those regulatory uh, sectors. We have experience that we draw on. It's part of the roadmap of these businesses moving forward. In your final, the, sorry, there were three or four questions in one. The final part of your question, how do we uh, see the evolution of our portfolio over the next three to five years? I think with the fund practice, it means that we'll have a, a broader set of bets that we can uh, that we can uh, uh, make. And I, when I say bets, I don't mean a non-gambling you know, non way. We are very, very detailed when we, when we make our uh, investment decisions. Uh, I would expect the split between life sciences and industrial sustainability to remain roughly 50-50. It will go up and down over time. Uh, but I expect there'll be a broader spread between the different stages of investment from the early stages feeding the pipeline through to late pre-IP pre or pre-M&A stage, a more balanced approach over time. A question by Tom. Uh, you mentioned implementing a carried interest scheme to align management interests with shareholders and attract talent. How do you plan to build out such a scheme? Uh, so that is in the development. Uh, we're very much mindful that we are a PLC, and we're also very much mindful that we are a VC. So we need to cross these two, two worlds. It's a considered approach. Uh, what I'll say is that uh, uh, we uh, um, are in favor of a collegiate approach to such carried interest schemes, reflecting that uh, there is no superheroes in our business. Uh, perhaps the superheroes are the guys building the portfolio companies. Rather, it's a team approach in terms of how we add value to these businesses and take them to the next stage. Uh, however, we need to attract top talent from, from the industry. You know, we are competing uh, with other VCs and uh, there is a certain way of doing uh, things in the VC space. Uh, equally, uh, we want whatever the outcome is to be in the interest of shareholders and aligned with uh, shareholders' interests. Uh, we will be announcing, announcing more detail on that as, as, as the scheme is uh, further developed uh, and uh, implemented. Uh, and uh, moving on to the next question by Simon. If glycotest diagnostics, if glycotest diagnostic tests are successful, what is timeline to market? Um, look, the reality with glycotest is that COVID hit the company quite bad. We were able to work through it, but you know we lost a considerable period of time uh, because there were simply no clinical trials. The company has now caught up, and we are at the point uh, we are at a good point now. Uh, so in terms of timeline to market, we anticipate Glycotest will, will be making a, a kind of a broader announcement in the coming months as they consolidate their business plan. Uh, but uh, at the moment, we're looking at uh, 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 not earlier than 2025. Okay, I think I've answered all the questions, uh, but uh, please feel free to get in touch with ourselves and our investor relations team. And uh, uh, thank you for your support and uh, looking forward to seeing you at uh, one of the next presentations. Elian, thank you for answering all those questions you can from investors. And of course, the company can review all questions submitted today and we'll publish those responses on the InvestorMe company platform. Just before redirecting investors to provide you with their feedback, which I know is particularly important to yourself and the company, could I please just ask you for a few closing comments? For myself, not from the, from the viewers. Uh, no, look, uh, guys, we, we live in really fascinating times there's a lot of change in industry and for a number of businesses that's challenging in our space in venture capital that is where great businesses are born we are cautiously optimistic uh, we see a lot of great opportunities on the market valuations uh, have become a lot more realistic so from an acquisition uh, uh, side perspective it is very exciting equally we need to balance that with the challenges our portfolio companies face in the current funding environment we feel we've built a uh, uh, business model that is uh, uh, 
right for, the, for today's times. It's not simplistic. There is some complexity in it. I appreciate it. But now, over the last three years, we have shown that it works uh, over and over again. So, personally, myself, I'm really excited for, 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 for what is to come. The uh, world is uh, uh, full of opportunities, but uh, equally, we need to do this growth in a balanced manner. Hence, this uh, balance between, on the one hand, growth, on the other hand, paying for our bills. Uh, so, uh, you know, please uh, follow our LinkedIn. Please also follow the LinkedIn of EMV Capital, which has more frequent updates on non-regulatory updates on the portfolio companies. And uh, once again, I thank uh, you. Uh, thank you for your support. Alien, thank you for updating investors today. Can I please ask investors not to close this session as you'll now be automatically redirected to provide your feedback in order that the management team can better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments to complete and I'm sure will be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Net Scientific PLC, we'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation and good morning to you all.